NBC Television presents... Tick, tack, go! And here is your host, Jack Berry! Thank you very much. And a very cordial welcome once again to Tic Tac Doe, the television game where two players compete to score three X's or three O's in a row, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, up there on the Tic Tac Doe board. The way the players get their X's or O's on the board is by answering questions on the categories that appear in the boxes that they select. On yesterday's program, Mort Wolfson, our current champion, ran his winnings to $3,000. Now he has to tell us whether he wants to take that money and quit or risk it by continuing to play. So let's find out as we meet our first two players. Returning with $3,000 from New York City, a writer. He writes mysteries, worked in the Merchant Marine, and his hobby is constructing crossword puzzles. Mr. Morton Wilson. <laughs> and the literary agent. She's taught at Harvard and Yale, is married to an antique dealer, and her hobby is fishing. Mrs. Shirley Fisher. What? <laughs> Nice to have you both back with us here on Tic Tac Doe. Yesterday you won yourself $3,000, Mort, and in a moment you'll tell us whether you want to take that money and quit or risk it by continuing to play. We learned something about your very interesting background yesterday, and we found out, too, that you were a hobo, spent some time as a hobo before you were a mystery writer. What else have you done? Well, Jack, I've also been a union organizer. Really? What was that, uh, Hobo Local 402 or something? <laughs> And, uh, Mrs. Fisher, I hope that your husband didn't take offense. He's, I know he's an antique dealer, and I was kidding a little bit about it yesterday. Was he, was he uh, upset about it at oh, all? Oh, no, Jack, he loved it. He, did, he didn't mind it no, at all? No, he got a good big kick out of it. That's good, because I hate those people that kid about antique shops. I have a friend of mine, every time he walks into an antique shop, he says, hello, what's new? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand people say things like that. <laughs> well, Mort, take a look at the tic tac Doe board. There are the categories that are going to be used. Look them over now, carefully. You have $3,000. If you quit, I'll give you a check for $3,000. If you go on, you do so at a risk, because if you lose, whatever you lose will be deducted. What are you going to do? I'll go on, Jack. Very good. Then how we go. Let's fix that <laughs> All right, Mort Wilson, risking $3,000. Where do you go with your first X? I'll try Latin America. Latin America, down at the bottom, and here is your question. Name the only British colony on the South American mainland. That would be British Guiana. That's right. You get an X. The game is at $100. Where do you want to go with your O, Mrs. Fisher? Uh, gay 90s. Gay 90s. A tough question in the center box. If we need extra time, you may have it. A certain Major Esterhazy was the real criminal in a sensational case which sent an innocent Frenchman to prison in 1894. Name the case. The Dreyfus case. That's right. You get an O. The game is at $300. End of the round. Let's go to the next round. All right. Where do you want to go with your next X, Mort? I think I'll try the gay 90s, Jack. All right, this should be an easier question on the gay 90s up on top, and here is the question. In July of 1890, the United States grew to 44 states with the admission to the union of two far western states. Name either of these two states. 1890? Right. I'll just have to guess on that, Jack. I'll try um, Oregon. No, I'm sorry. Idaho or Wyoming? I'm sorry you don't score. Where do you want to go with your O, Mrs. Fisher? Uh, I will try elections. Elections? All right. Here is your question on elections. Richard Newberger was elected to the United States Senate in a 1954 election. Name the western state in which this election took place. Uh, the state was Oregon. Yeah, that's what Mort said. You get yourself an O. The game is a four and off. End of the round. Let's go to the next round. <laughs> All right, where do you want to go with your next X, Mort? I'll have to go to the United Nations, Jack. United Nations to block her from getting three O's and winning your championship. And here's the question. What is the name of the Norwegian who served as the first Secretary General of the United Nations? That was Trigby Lee. Right, you get an X. The game is at $500. <laughs> where do you want to go with your O, Mrs. Fisher? Uh, I think I'll try elections again. Up on top, elections. Here is your question on elections. Herbert Hoover won the first time he ran for president, but lost his bid for re-election. Name the two men he faced in these elections. Uh, the second one, when he lost, was Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, 1928, it was Al Smith. Absolutely right. You got to know the game is at $600. <laughs> End of the round. Let's go to the next round. All right, where do you want to go with your next X, Mort? 
I'm afraid his comic strips, Jack. Trying to block her from getting three O's up and down and winning your championship. Here is the question. What is the name of Blondie's daughter? Well, her husband's Dagwood. That's any help. Uh, Time is up. I will have to call for your answer, Mort. I'll just say Snookums. I beg your pardon? Snookums. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> no, Cookie. Cookie. We're close, though. Sorry you don't score. Where do you want to go with your own, Mrs. Fisher? I'll try comic strips. You're going to try to win with comic strips. Here is your question on comic strips. If you answer correctly, you'll have three O's up and down. The game will go to $700, which you'll win and become the champion. A lady whose real name is Lai Cho San, which means Mountain of Wealth, is a very well-known comic strip character. For $700 and the championship, by what name is she best known? The Dragon Lady? That is Tic-Tac-Toe for $700. <laughs> Congratulations, Ms. Fisher. You just won yourself $700 and, of course, the right to continue. Mort, uh, you do pretty well. You had $3,000 when you started. We subtract $700. You're left with $2,300. And, of course, a check will be waiting. What are you going to do with that money? Well, uh, count it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you can trust us. It'll all be there. But, I mean, after you've counted it, what are you going to do with it? Well, uh, I think I need a new mattress. A new mattress? <laughs> Well, I want to tell you, you get some pretty strange responses here. A mattress, huh? How about a bed? Well, mine holds up pretty well. The bed, but the mattress. Well, you're going to have the best mattress you ever slept on for $2,300. Thank you very much for playing. Goodbye, boy. <laughs> and now the golden opportunity is yours. Are you shaking or is I that me? I am. Oh, no, it's me. <laughs> She's just vibrating all over. It's me all over, I, I think guess you I need a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, calm down. Calm down. It's all over now. You got $700. Now things get easier from here on in. Well, I was calm before I got oh it. Oh, my gosh. She is just <laughs> shaking like a leaf. I have to have some excuse to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Fisher, we're going to see what you do with your money as we meet our next player. From New York City, an actor. He was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, served in the South Pacific, and his hobby is furniture making. Mr. William Culpepper. Culpepper, how are you? It's fine, thank you, Jack. Shake hands with Mrs. Fisher, who she doesn't even have to move her hand, just puts it out and <laughs> shakes by itself. <laughs> she is shaking, isn't she? She is. It really is. How about you? Are you calm enough? Oh, perfectly, yes. Well, you've done a little acting, haven't you? A little, yes. Uh, what kind of acting you do? Oh, television, legitimate. And uh -huh. I've done a couple of films. Any, uh, anything else? Well, uh, I've done about 26 television shows, and last season I did an off-Broadway show, and a little Shakespeare and stuff Shakespeare? Like mm hmm It's fun to do Shakespeare, isn't it? Yes, I enjoyed it. He was much. so prophetic, he knew exactly what was going to happen. Imagine so many years ago saying TV or not TV. That's, uh, wow. that is our future. <laughs> That's a pretty bad one, I'd say, right now. And let's... <laughs> Mrs. Fisher, are you calmed down sufficiently to look at that tic-tac-toe board? Well, I can just about see yeah. it, I guess. Uh-huh. This is going to be a true-false game, the next one. Should make it a little easier, but I want you to know that before you make your decision. Take a look at the categories which will be used in the true-false contest about to follow. <coughs> you have $700. If you quit, I'll give you a check for $700. If you go on, and if you lose, of course, whatever you lose will be deducted. Do you think you can make it to go on? Well, in the state I'm in, I can't even decide, so I guess I will. You better go on. All right, I'll take that. This is Shirley Fisher, now risking $700. Where do you go with your first X? Uh, I'll try federal government. Federal government down on the bottom. Here is your question, and remember this is true, false. United States senators and representatives receive annual salaries of $22,500. True or false? Time is up, I'll have to call true. for your answer. True is right. You get an X. The game is at $100. Bill <laughs> well, Culpepper, where do you want to go with your O? Well, I'll try movies, Jack. I beg your pardon? Movies. Movies. The difficult question in the center box. If you need extra time, you may have it. Spencer Tracy won Academy Awards in two successive years for his work in Captain's Courageous and Boy's Town. True or false? True. Wonderful. True is right. You get an O. The game is at $300. End of the round. Let's go to the next round. <laughs> All right, where do you want to go with your next X, Mrs. Uh, Fisher? I'll try the movies, too. Movies up on top. Here is your question on the movies. Betty Davis and Ann Baxter were both in the film All About Eve. True, True. or false? True. True is right. You got an X. The game is at $400. <laughs> where do you want to go with your O, Bill? 
Well, at this point, I'd like to go home, but I guess I'd better try baseball. All right. Well, you can go for home base on baseball. <laughs> Here is your question on baseball in, in an attempt to block her from getting three X's up and down. Both Roy Campanella and Stan Musial have won the National League's Most Valuable Player Award three times. True or false? True. True is right. You've got to know the game is a five on the dollar. Let's go to the next round. Your positions are up. Where do you go with your X? Well, I'll do the movies again. The movies again to try to block him from getting three O's across and winning <clears> the <throat> championship. Ingrid Bergman won an Academy Award in 1944 for her performance in the film Spellbound. True or false? I think it was Gaslight. False. Is up. You were right. It was Gaslight, and it's false. You got an X for getting the $600. What do you want to go with your O, Bill? Well, I'll try World War II, Jack. Up on top, World War II, and here is your question. The infamous traitor Quisling was Premier of Denmark. True or false? False. It was Norway. You're right. You've got to know the game is at $700. Let's go to the next round. New positions are up. $700 a stake, was the, which is the exact amount you won in the previous game. Mrs. Fisher, where do you want to go with your next X? Uh, spelling. Spelling down the bottom, and here is your question in an attempt to block him from getting three O's. The word gazetteer is spelled with one T and two E's. True or false? One T and two E's. Gazetteer. False. False is right. It's two T's and three E's. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Where do you want to go with your O, Bill? Well, I guess I'd better try rivers, although, wow. Well, Rivers, Jeff. Rivers, all right, here is your question. If you answer correctly, we will have a tie. The Thames River in England flows into the North Sea. True or false? False. I'm sorry, it's true. <laughs> you don't score at the end of the round. Let's go to the next round. Where do you want to go with your next X? I'll try federal government. You're going to try to win. Federal government is the category, and here is your question. If you answer correctly, you'll have three X's across. The game will go to $900, which you'll win. Add it to the $700 you have, you'll be winning $1,600. President Eisenhower is the chairman of the National Security Council. For $1,600, true or false? True. Absolutely right, for $1,600. Congratulations, Ms. Fisher. You've just won yourself $1,600, and of course, the right to continue playing is for you, Bill. We uh, have no money for you, of course, but you do get a handsome Polaroid land camera, which is uh, one of the finest in the world, develops its own pictures in 60 seconds. And thought you might like to take along this tic-tac-toe game. It's currently being seen in all the stores, or all the department stores all over the country. It's a fine game. It's just like the game we play here. You'll have lots of fun playing it at home. Thank you very much for playing tic-tac-toe. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, Shaky, how are you? Uh, well, a little better, little I think. A little better? Yes. Yeah, you're down to about 73 revolutions per minute right now. <laughs> you have $1,600, and we'll get on with the game in a moment. But first, a word from the National Broadcasting Company, and here it is. How do you do? This is Dave Garraway. Next Sunday afternoon on February 2nd, Wide Wide World live cameras will travel the waters of the Mississippi River to America's most fabulous city, New Orleans. You will visit a vibrant city there, a city where generations of revelers have celebrated the Mardi Gras. You will go behind the grillwork of those beautiful balconies and meet the ruler of a mythical kingdom called Carnival. On a pleasure boat in the Mississippi, you will meet a woman whose New Orleans songs are heard around the world. She is the fabulous Lizzie Miles. You will stand at the wheel of a great ship and watch her pilot steer her through the tricky waters of Old Man River. From the waters of Lake Itasca, up in Minnesota, where this mighty giant is spawned, this will be a love story. Our stage will be the heart of a continent. Our actors, a river, and a city. Travel to her heart with us Sunday on Wide Wide World when we visit New Orleans on the river. And right now we take time out for station identification. But we'll be back with Tic Tac Doe in just a moment. Shirley Temple Storybook presents Rumpelstiltskin live Sunday.
This portion of Tic Tac Dough is presented by pure old vegetable Crisco. Get the best, Crisco, America's favorite brand of shortening. And here again is Jack Berry. <laughs> Thank you. We are playing tic-tac-toe here on NBC, and the young lady standing beside me is Mrs. Shirley Fisher, who, despite a tremendous attack of nerves, has managed to win herself $1,600. And then we'll find out whether she wants to continue playing or not. But you know, it takes a mother to know the way to her family's heart. And here's what we mean. What a wonderful way to show your family how much you love them, by making an especially luscious cake. You start by choosing the freshest eggs, Second best just won't do, so you get the best. It's the same with shortening. Second best just won't do, so you take the best, pure, all-vegetable Crisco. Where your family's health and mealtime pleasure are concerned, isn't it good to know Crisco is pure and whiter, comes to you fresher, and stays fresher than any other shortening or oil. Other shortenings try to look just like Crisco but they can't cook just like Crisco. No wonder two out of three women choose the best. When you give your family that higher Crisco cake and you see the love in their eyes, you'll be glad you chose the best. Crisco, for your family deserves the best, always. All right, Mrs. Fisher, you have $1,600. Let's see what you do with it as we meet our next player. From Weston, Connecticut, an advertising man. He served with the United States Air Force, has studied law, and his hobby is folk music. Mr. John Brady. <laughs> Again, Mrs. Fisher, she just won herself $1,600 and has to decide whether she should risk it playing against you or not. You live in Weston, Connecticut, and you work here in New York. Is that much of a trip every day? Well, I have to get up at about 6.30 every morning, John. 6.30? And I don't get back until after 7.30. Boy, that's long hours. Do you ever miss the train? Well, I never miss it going to work, but I've missed it going home a few times. Uh-huh. Well, you get up at 6.30, I don't think you missed the train, you missed the boat. That's what I want to tell you. <laughs> Mrs. Fisher, take a look at the tic-tac-toe board, will you? There are the categories that are going to be used. Look them over carefully now. You have $1,600. If you quit, you'll get a check for that amount, and you can stop shaking. If you want to continue shaking, you can do so, but you take a risk nonetheless. Oh, I've gotten so used to shaking, I guess I'll go on. You like it. All right, then I'll go. All right, our current champion, Mrs. Shaky Fisher, now risking $1,600. And where do you want to go with your first... Uh, Shirley Fisher, excuse me. Uh, where do you want to go with your first X? I'll try Kings. Kings, all right, down at the bottom. And here is your question on Kings. Leopold III was first crowned king of this country in 1934. He later returned from exile and abdicated in favor of his son. Of what country was Leopold King? Belgium. Right, you get an X. The game is a one at all. <laughs> Brady, where do you want to go with your O? I'll try the center box. Uh, Republicans, uh, the difficult question in the center. If you need some extra time, you may have it. What official position does Henry Cabot Lodge's brother, John, hold in the Eisenhower administration? Want to think it over? Yes, I do. I'll tell you when your time is up. We are all in the center box. What is the position? Uh, I'm afraid I'm wrong, but I think he's the, uh, the uh, Eisenhower's uh, representative to the United Nations. No, I'm sorry. He's ambassador to Spain. I'm sorry you don't score. At the end of the round, let's go to the next round. Where do you want to go with your next sex, Shirley Fisher? Well, I'll try Democrats. Democrats, all right. Here's your question on Democrats. Senator Frank Church is the youngest man in the United States Senate. What far western state does he represent? He's from Idaho. Right, you get an extra game of the $200. <laughs> you go with your uh, I have to go to columnist. Man. Columnist down on the bottom, and here is your question in an attempt to block her from getting three X's. This popular Hearst columnist won recognition from Henry L. Mencken, American language expert, for coining such phrases as making whoopee, middle aisling, and many more. Name this famous columnist. Walter Winchell. Winchell is right. You get to know the game is at $300. <laughs> Go to the next round. Where do you want to go with your next X, Shirley Fisher? I think I'll try famous pears. Famous pears up on top. Here then is your question. In the 17th century, a famous pair of Frenchmen, Pierre Radisson and his partner, nicknamed Gooseberry, were instrumental in the development of a famous Canadian fur company that is still active today. Name this company. Uh, the Hudson Bay Company. Absolutely right. You get yourself an X. Where do you want to go with your O? 
Representative was bad on Democrats, Jack. Democrats, the difficult question in the center box in an effort to block her from getting three X's diagonally. If you need extra time, you can have it. As the Democratic governor of a deep south state, Marvin Griffin has been very much in the news lately. Name the state he Georgia. governs. is right. You got yourself an O. The game is at $600. Round. Let's go to the next round. All right, we'll take a moment out here with $600 at stake, getting to a very critical part in the game. Time out to tell all you new mothers how to get suds soft as mink for your precious baby wash. Just listen. Well, I wouldn't dream of dictating what washing product mothers ought to choose. For tender care of baby's things. Go pink. Go pink, go drift. Go pink, go baby pink drift. Your washing machine will perform in the pink. For Didi's white wipe, go suds soft as mink. Go pink, go drift. You'll get colors bright in a wink. And for a soft little sweater, it's safer, it's better. Go pink, go drift. Lotion Pink Drift is very special. Tender, loving care is built right in. So is automatic cleansing action. It's like having a nurse for baby. The care Drift takes. Diapers especially come soft, sweet, clean. So for tender, loving care of everything that babies wear, go pink, go drift. All right, on we go with our game. $600 at stake. Shirley Fisher, where do you go with your ex? I'll try Republicans. We're trying to try to block him. Yes. All right, here is your question on Republicans. If you do answer correctly, you will have blocked him. There are two Republicans with the last name of Martin in the United States Senate. Tell me what state either one represents in the Senate. Well, Joe Martin's from Massachusetts. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, uh, Edward Martin is from Pennsylvania. Thomas Martin from Iowa. Uh, Joe Martin, I believe, is a House, not the Senate. That's right. I'm sorry you don't score. Where do you want to go with your O? Well, I'll try Pop Singers. You'll try Pop. You're going to try to block her. Yeah. All right, here's your question on Pop Singers. This famous singer made her dramatic debut in Mamba's Daughters. Her autobiography, His Eye is on the Sparrow, was published in 1951. Name her. Ethel Waters. Ethel Waters is right. You get her next O, the name of the $700. End of the round. Let's go to the next round. Where do you want to go this time, Shirley, with your ex? Ah, now I really am in trouble. I'll try famous pairs. Famous pairs, trying to block them across. Here is your question on famous pairs. This famous pair wrote the music and lyrics to such hits as Brigadoon and My Fair Lady. Name both of them. Lerner and Lowe. Lerner and Lowe is right to get yourself an excellent <laughs> Now, where do you go with your O, John Brady? Well, I'll try Pop Singers, John. You're going to try to win it this time with Pop Singers. All right, here is your question. Mm -hmm. I caution you, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, not to call out answers. This is a very critical moment with $900 at stake. If you answer this correctly, you will have three O's, and you will win $900 and become the champion. This exotic singer... You know it already? No, I'll just... Oh, I beg your pardon? No, it's, uh, I'm frightened already. Oh, yeah? <laughs> this exotic singer has appeared on television with the band led by her husband, Xavier Cugat. For $900, name her. Abby Lane. Abby ah. Lane is right for $900. <laughs> You just won yourself $900 and, of course, the right to continue playing if you so desire. As for you, Mrs. Fisher, aren't you glad it's over? I certainly am. You had $1,600 when you started. We subtract the $900 and there'll be a check for $700 waiting for you. What are you going to do with the $700 after you've bought some tranquilizer pills? Well, I already have a mattress, so uh, <laughs> I'll have to think about it. <laughs> so what do you think you'll buy? A bedstead? Yes, maybe, maybe. Well, whatever it is we, you buy, we hope that you'll be very happy. You've been a delightful contestant. We're glad you won $700. Goodbye. <laughs> now, before we find out any more about you, uh, do you have a mattress? Oh, I have several of them. You have several. Yeah. Then you really don't need any money no. or anything. Well, I need money, but not mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never pay off in mattresses. You have $700? And you have $900, excuse me, whether you're going to continue or quit is up to you entirely, and we'll find out as we meet our next player. An assistant picture editor. She works for a national magazine, worked her way through school as a waitress, and her hobby is horseback riding. Miss Carol Sainer. Take hands with John. John's just won himself $900 and has to decide whether he wants to risk it, playing against you or not. Carol, I see you work for Time magazine. What do you do over there? 
I work in the picture collection. A little louder for us. I work in the picture collection where I caption and classify the, photo the photographs. Oh, you put those captions under the... I saw a very interesting... It must, must have been something or other. There was a picture, I don't know where it was, some newspaper, of a 75-year-old man who was just getting married. And then there was also a picture of uh, an, an army plant that was being uh, changed, converted. And they must have gotten the captions mixed up because under the 75-year-old man's picture, it said, old powerhouse reactivated. <laughs> My must have been a mistake, <laughs> I think, yeah. My first week. <laughs> <laughs> John, take a look at the Dick Tac Doe board. There are the categories that are going to be used if you decide to risk your money. You have $900 at stake. You can take that money and quit, and I'll give you a check for $900. If you go on playing, you take a risk, because whatever you lose will be deducted. What do you do? I'll play, John. You play again. All right, then on we go. We'll pick that go. <laughs> All right, risking $900. John Brady, where do you go with your first X? I'll try pop music. Pop music up on top, and here is your question in that category. Johnny Mercer wrote this tune for a 1936 film. Listen and name it. That is the song. Can you name it? I'm an old cowhand. That's right, you are. You get an X in the game for one and a dollar. Where do you want to go with your old Carol Sater? Whoops. You don't have to go anywhere at all. That signal means that our time is up. In just a moment, I want to find out whether both of you can come back tomorrow and finish this game. So, if you will, think about it for just a moment or two. And, uh... While they're thinking about it, have you heard about New Comet Cleanser? Well, here's a family that certainly has. Here come three reasons why the Mullers needed a bigger apartment. They found one. Everything was wonderful, except the bathroom. The porcelain was so dingy. Mrs. Muller tried to clean it, but her usual cleanser just wouldn't do the job. Contained bleach, too. Then she discovered Comet. That evening after their bath, the boys had orders to clean the tub. No dingy tub now. Comet made it gleam. You see, only Comet contains chlorinol, the greatest bleaching agent a cleanser ever had. Gosh, that tub was so white it looked like new. Comet gets tubs and sinks whiter and cleaner than ever before. Important, too, Comet kills household germs, disinfects as it cleans. Yes. Comet bleaches out stains, wipes out germs as no other leading cleanser can. Get Comet. John, can you come back tomorrow? Yes, I can. And how about you, Carol? Yes, I can. Very good. You both come back tomorrow, and we'll continue the game, pick it up right where we've left off. Congratulations for winning $900 today, John Brady. Thank you. For those of you who are watching, I mean Monday, isn't it Monday? Monday. Can you go back Monday? I Very good. I've forgotten the weekend's coming up. You will be back on Monday, though. And we hope those of you watching will be back on Monday, too, to see who, whether John Brady can continue his winning streak or whether he'll be dethroned by Carol Saner. We'll be seeing you Monday, twice, of course, on Tic Tac Doe at noontime and our 21 program at 9 that same evening. So have a very, very happy weekend, and we look forward to seeing all of you here on the program at noon on Monday. Be safe, be happy, and goodbye, everybody. <laughs>